what issues did the Philadelphia Convention leave unaddressed, and what have been the consequences of the failure to address them? Whenever you guys are ready, you can begin. Prior to the Articles of Confederation, the colonies experienced abuses by the British monarchy that included taxation without representation and unauthorized quartering of soldiers. Under the Articles, the states retained sovereignty and the national government held little power. States retained so much power that they thought of themselves as individual countries. Charles Pickney, a delegate to the Constitutional Convention, stated, my country, Virginia. This increased the framers' fear of creating a corrupt government. To avoid this repeated misuse of power, they wrote the Constitution, which bound state and federal powers. The framers used the system of federalism as the model for the Constitution. This system is contrary to unitary governments, such as those in England and France, under which national governments maintain total power. In our system, power resides in both federal and state governments. Founding Father James Madison wrote in Federalist Paper No. 51, In framing the government, you must first enable the government to control the government and in the next place, oblige it to control itself. Enumerated powers are solely given to the federal government. Only Congress can declare war, coin money, establish an army, regulate interstate commerce, and enter treaties with foreign governments. The federal government must make all laws necessary to enforce the Constitution. If enumerated powers were granted to states, then chaos would occur, as it did under the Articles of Confederation. Concurrent powers are powers given to both the states and federal governments balance the system. Among these is the ability to make and enforce laws. If the states did not have this power, the federal government would have difficulty ensuring the safety of the citizens. However, if the federal government could not make or enforce laws, there would be no solution to the disputes between the states. Another shared power is the power to tax. Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution states that Congress has the power to levy and collect taxes, but the framers realized it would be beneficial if this power were concurrent. For example, citizens pay a local, local property tax on both a state and federal income taxes. Additionally, both can establish courts, charter banks, and exercise eminent domain. Under the 10th Amendment of the Constitution, the power not delegated to the United States nor prohibited to the states are reserved to the states respectively. A state reserves the power to build its own roadways, issue licenses, regulate intrastate commerce, and administer state elections. Additionally, the states protect the general health and well-being of citizens by establishing police and fire departments. Many times, court cases question whether the state or federal government has a jurisdiction to act on a particular issue. For example, in the case of Lopez versus United States, the Supreme Court attempted to use the Commerce Clause to regulate possession of firearms near or within a school. The Supreme Court, in a 5-4 decision, held that even though Congress had the broad power to make laws under the Commerce Clause, it was limited. The Obama administration health care law's individual mandate has been declared unconstitutional by Virginia and Florida state courts. If held constitutional, it will mark a major point in the history of federalism. According to Randy E. Barnett, a law professor at Georgetown University Law Center, once the power to constrict Americans to enter into contractual relations is accepted, will be accepted for any circumstances that Congress deems it convenient to the regulation of the national economy. Health insurance previously regulated by the state would now be controlled by the federal government, giving it unprecedented power. The Philadelphia Convention looked at few controversial issues and addressed. Among these issues were slavery, citizenship, and voting rights. The framers never established a set of requirements to be a citizen. Slavery, citizenship, and voting rights were all issues left to the states to decide. These, among other issues, led to the Civil War. After the war, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments were written as solutions. The 13th Amendment officially ended slavery. The 14th Amendment contains a clear citizenship clause. The 15th Amendment grants voting rights for all men. Today, the issue of federalism and the Tenth Amendment is still controversial, as have been in the recent presidential Republican debates. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to start our uh, follow-up question segment. Thank you. Our founding fathers had a, a, a fear of too much authoritarian government. So when they built the Constitution, they placed limits on national and state governments. In what ways do these limits on national and state governments protect individual rights? Certainly we can see after the Civil War when um, African Americans were granted their first rights, uh, the South Southern states passed black codes, which really were just meant to prevent them, and they disrespected the African Americans. And the federal government stepped in and helped to give the African Americans the rights that they so rightly deserve. An additional example of this would be a recent case in Arizona when uh, the Arizona court ruled that the citizens in Arizona must show their ID um, if they're expect, uh, suspects of illegal immigrants. And the Supreme 
federal court stepped in and said that this would be discrimination and this is how it would help the citizens. In Brown versus Board of Education, when segregated schools were abolished and proved unconstitutional, um, um, Eisenhower, President I, former President Eisenhower, sent troops to make sure that the students had the, uh, had to go to the same school and it had a sound and safe place for education. Another um, thing that was protected from the federal government was people's rights to security. Um, the recent case in South um, Carolina, where they wanted the voters to show their ID before they vote, and the Supreme Court ruled this unconstitutional because it would violate the people's rights to their privacy. Thank you. The uh, one of the uh, problems or concerns that the uh, uh, that the founders that some of the founders had with a strong central government was the distance to the simple simple uh, problem of distance to the government, to wherever the capital would be located, whether it was New York or Philadelphia or eventually Washington. Uh, with increased communications today, is that still a concern? Um, no, I don't think it's a concern because if you can see now, um, it's very easy to reach someone, like your mayor, like rather than like you don't need to reach the president in order to have an issue solved. Um, for example, with the budget cuts, there was a rally in our school. There was a rally not in, in our town, and we um, tried to reach out to. See, um, they tried to reach out to state officials to show them that um, the budget cuts that they were going to be implementing in our um, education system. Would, be, would not be beneficial to the education of the people in our city. Additionally, I feel another way we can stay connected to the central government is through the media. And very quickly, tomorrow or every day, you can read the news, watch TV, and you will find out a lot about what's happening in the government and everything about the elections. An example would be in a recent interview with President Obama, uh, we had a an option to ask our questions through via internet. We were I had an option where we can submit our questions, and the media can di directly ask Obama our the answer for it. Um, this also isn't an issue because, as the recent um, SOFA, the recent SOFA um, bill, which isn't passed anymore, but when people were protesting against it, you had the um, opportunity to call your congressman if you needed wanted to say something about it. So obviously, well, you could see that. Um, you don't need to, re you, it's easy to reach out to one of your um, congressmen now. As Tip O'Neill said, all politics is local. So today we can use our communications to go to our uh, uh, community, like our mayor, our councilwoman, and we're able, able to go directly to them and tell them our problems, and therefore we have more trust in our local government. In England, we can see that there is a unitary government, and so if we have an, a problem, for an example, garbage problem, we have to go reach the national government. However, in this, uh, in America, we have we have seen that if we have this problem, we can reach our municipal or the or the city mayor. Uh, as Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter to Judge William Johnson, uh, the states best govern our home interests, and the national government our foreign ones. Therefore, I wish never to see all power shifted directly to the government. And from this quote, we can see that he was trying to um, state that we should not have a unitary government such as the one in England because the people want to go to uh, their community and reach out to them. Um, if something radically changed and the Constitution were to be completely remodeled tomorrow, which feature would you most strongly urge to retain? I think the feature that I would most strongly urge to retain is the one where the federal government can um, stop state laws if they're um, if they see that they're bad for the states. For example, um, in the in the um, immigration act, the immigration law that Arizona made, where they needed to um, show they need, they could just come up to any random person on the street and ask them for their citizenship papers. Um, well, obviously there, there was some sort of discrimination against them, and um, they could see that it was hurting people, and, and 
that's why it's important for the federal government to come. I agree with my panel member, Lauren. I believe that the strongest thing in the Constitution is that there is a strong national government. Under the Articles of Confederation, they didn't have that. And that, I believe, is one of the biggest problems. Under the Constitution, because we have a strong national government, it's able to uh, do things that are better for the states generally, rather than if the states were in control, it would be for their personal interest. Excellent job. Well, uh, we would just de definitely like to congratulate you guys. You were extremely, extremely well prepared. Uh, you know, very, very well spoken. You guys made great eye contact the whole time, which is a great thing for public speaking, and we know that it's not easy. Um, and what I was most impress impressed with was, you know, your ability to not only uh, call out historical examples, but also current examples, and I love that you brought up your local example of your own school budget, which was awesome. Um, that's the first time we've heard that all day, and I thought that was great. Um, also, really enjoyed the uh, comparison with England. I thought that was great. Um, and, you know, just would really like to uh, congratulate you guys. I was very, very impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And he took all my comments. <laughs> I, <should come. laughs> you did, you did. I was going to say, great eye contact. I mean, that, you, you really looked confident, and you really were able to explain everything. I love the Tim O'Neill comment, um, and I think it's really true. And I think you were very good at applying not only historical examples for current events, but also you brought in the cases where they were relevant. And I think that was, you did an excellent job. It was very good. It was very good balance. Everybody got into the act. Uh, and you did, you, you were very quick to point out various examples. Um, I'm just sorry that it's uh, such a short uh, four, six minute question period because there were things said that I would, would love to look at. I'm sure that's true with our, my colleagues too. Love to elaborate on it and kick around. Uh, but uh, very nice, very good presentation and uh, 